This is the Papal State in 1507. We're the number three great power in the world with 778 dev. We own almost all of Italy. We have 70,000 troops. We're running level three advisors. We're making 66 ducats a month with no loans and no inflation. Quality and trade ideas unlock for super powerful armies and being super rich with these five advisors, with five merchants. We have three subjects that were ready to reconquer their cores for basically no aggressive expansion. All estates are super loyal and we have more than 30% crownland. Obviously we're the Curia controller. We're ready to turn our back on our former allies Austria and France and conquer their provinces and later go on to conquer Castile, Aragon and the Ottomans. And of course soon we'll declare the Kingdom of God. This is how you can do the same. Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for the Papal State for EU4 1.36 King of Kings. So the Papal State is a nation located in the center of Italy right here and obviously we are playing as the Pope as the Papal States. We are the Pope and we do start off controlling one of the most powerful abilities in EU4 the Papacy right here. As you can see we are the Curia controller which gives us some amazing bonuses that we will want to keep a hold of until the end of the game. These bonuses are minus 10% stab cost an additional diplomat plus one yearly prestige a 20 percent advisor discount plus two possible advisors a tech discount of five percent plus one diplo rep leaders without upkeep minus 20 percent aggressive expansion impact which is probably the most important modifier right here in the early game for playing in italy and around the hre minus 10 percent diplomatic cost plus 10 clergy loyalty and we have the ability to call for crusades which will make fighting some of these heathen nations down here easier for nations that fight them or even for ourselves and of course we also have the super powerful ability to excommunicate nations which will make taking provinces from them even cheaper and give us even less aggressive expansion of course we can also spend our own money to appoint loyalists and invest papal influence in becoming the next area controller which will be super super easy for us along with the ability to pick golden bulls more on that later we also start off as the papacy tier one government reform right here which gives us plus one tolerance of the true faith we're only a kingdom and we have prestige per development from missionary along with clergy influence the papal state has some amazing missions right here which focus on us conquering the entirety of italy forming the kingdom of god and working on our relations with other nations in and around europe in order to sort of boost catholicism and the papal state also has a really good national idea starting off with plus one diplomat and plus 25 percent religious unity finishing off with plus five percent discipline and in the meantime we have tolerance of the true faith plus 20 percent national tax very underrated for the early game minus one percent prestige decay minus 25 percent cost of fabricated claims production efficiency diplo free policies and even more aggressive expansion impact by playing as the pope you will go on to consolidate the entirety of italy in no time and you will continue to expand in the genoa and venice trade nodes and in the regions around you such as valencia and ragusa and then you could go on to many different paths and then you can choose one of many different paths to what you do as the pope whether to stay that size work on consolidating catholicism over in europe expanding elsewhere and taking back some of the holy lands or even going on to colonize. So sit back, relax, and learn what you need to do as the Papal State. All right, right here we are as the Papal State, and obviously the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go into our estates right here and summon the Diet. As the Pope, we also start off with 50% crownland ownership, which is actually super, super nice. Either way, after you summon the Diet, go ahead and choose whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're gonna give the clergy religious state and clerical advisory council, along with religious diplomats and clerical education. Then we're gonna give the nobility primacy of the nobility, increased levies, aristocratic counselors, and strong duchies, along with the nobility integration policy. We're doing these preemptively. Then we're finally going to give the burghers land of commerce, patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board, and indebted to the burghers. There's no shortage of money, so even though we can sell titles, there's no need to, so you can just seize land. Next, it's time for some alliances and rivalries. Go ahead and go into your rivals and rival two nations. I do recommend rivaling Provence and then whichever other nation you want to. I'm going to rival Savoy right here, for example, and then keep the third rival slot open because we're going to be rivaling Naples as soon as Aragon lets them go for free. Now, now, more on Naples. As you all know, Aragon starts off with a PU over Naples, but pretty soon after the game starts, just a couple of years when Alphonse here dies, Aragon decides to let Naples go for free. And as the Pope, we already border Naples, which means we can pounce on them super, super quickly and catch them without any allies or just one or two very small allies that'll be super easy for us to defeat. So that's why we want to leave this third rival slot open for Naples for once they're independent. Either way, now it's time to go in your advisors and hire some advisors. Go ahead 
and get whichever level one anime advisor you want. I'm going to get this Julian Inflation Reduction guy. Then go ahead and get a Diplo Rep or Improved Relations level one Dip Advisor. I am going to get this Improved Relations guy. And then get a Morale, Discipline, Fort Defense, or Manpower level one Mill Advisor. I have a Discipline and Fort Defense guy, so I am going to hire this Discipline guy. Now it's time for some alliances. And as the Pope, right at the start, you can pretty much ally whichever nation you want. It is going to be super, super easy to get alliances. But the nations that I recommend rivaling are the following. Of course, you do need to ally Austria right here just like that and they're probably going to be the first nation that you ally this will help you out and maybe fighting some of these hre guys right here at the start or maybe even potentially joining the hre just temporarily then the next nations that i recommend allying are someone in the north of italy that we're not going to fight very soon like milan for example and then one of castile and france whichever one of these nations you want to it really doesn't matter france is a little bit preferred in my opinion over castile but if you can't get france then you should go for castile but you should be able to get both of these guys either way now that i've allied austria i'm also going to start improving relations with france to be able to ally them and once a day passes i'm also going to ally milan and finally we also need to send a scornful insult over to naples so we are able to excommunicate them pretty soon right here and with this final diplomat i recommend you start spying on aragon so we can build up some claims on naples next we do need to rearrange our armies and navies a little bit so what you're going to do is you're going to take this fleet right here take the light ships and tell them to protect trade in genoa and go home during war and additionally i do recommend and building up a couple of more light ships about five should be enough for now and then build up a couple of more galleys about 10 should be enough for now then to save some money you could lower army maintenance and turn off your forts and remember to tell your subjects right here to siege and that's pretty much the early setup done now what we're waiting for is for aragon to let naples go for free and for france to break their alliance with provence once a day passes you will notice that you are able to enact a golden bull if you want to you can wait until the renaissance spawns and choose this to help other catholic nations over in europe embrace the renaissance as well or if you actually don't want to help these guys out and you care only for yourself then i recommend choosing this one right here immediately for the minus five percent dev cost there we go something that you should do right off the bat as well is tell our merchants in alexandria and valencia to go ahead and collect in genoa and in venice once those merchants are there instead of telling them to maximize profit we actually want to tell them to establish communities this leans into the whole thing of minimizing aggressive expansion as much as we can so we can expand as rapidly as we can the papal state is probably the easiest nation that you can take over the entirety of italy the fastest with now that i've allied austria and milan and i'm working on allying france and i'm spying on aragon with your two free diplomats you can start improving relations with allies now that i've allied austria and milan and with one diplomat i'm improving relations with france to ally them with the other i'm spying on aragon to get claims on naples with your two additional diplomats with one you can improve relations with own subjects and with the other one with allies at this point france has started the war versus England England right here and I am able to ally them if you ally them during this war or even before that if you ally them they will call you into the England war of course you should go ahead and accept it's not like you're gonna do anything there we go France has called me in of course I am gonna accept now at this point I can also take the mission right here Catholic Confernity once you get three allies you will also be able to take this mission right here which gives us a hundred diplo points and speaking of missions the other missions that we want to accomplish after we get our allies and after we take this mission is this one right here and this one right here for that we need a hundred relations with Switzerland and with Lithuania. So after a diplomat frees himself up, you can go ahead and improve relations with Switzerland and or Lithuania in order to accomplish those missions. And once you improve with Lithuania up to 100, you will be able to take this mission right here. It pretty much gives Lithuania some bonuses. We don't really gain any of these bonuses right here, except for the devotion, of course. And pretty much this mission makes Lithuania convert these Orthodox provinces to Catholic. Now that I've done that, I'm going to improve relations with Switzerland to do the mission with them. At this point, after scornfully insulting a Switzerland rival and improving relations to the max i can also take the mission form the swiss guard where we'll gain access to the papal swiss guard where we gain plus 10 percent merc discipline for 20 years additionally we also gain this event right here and this mercenary company becomes available which does not cost professionalism when hired once 1450 hits the renaissance will spawn and if you were lucky enough you will have spawned it yourself in my game that didn't happen it spawned in luca no matter what happened if you spawned it or not what you're gonna do is you're gonna activate the encouraged development state edict in your capital state of lazio umbria right here you can also expand in infrastructure and then develop Rome up to 30. This is to take off the age objective and to help speed up the spawning of the Renaissance a little bit if we haven't spawned it ourselves. Of course for a lot of you by this point Aragon will have already let Naples go for free by 1450. It does happen quite early. It hasn't happened in my game yet and of course I will show you what you will do in your game when it happens for mine no matter what date it is. And just as France ended their war with England the ruler of Aragon has died and once we get this event that's when we know that it happened and obviously it has happened. And pretty much, Aragon
Dragon decides to let Naples go for free. That already happens, but we also have a couple of choices right here. This first option right here will actually give Reigns a PUCB on Naples. That's obviously not something we want to do. The second option right here gives us a subjugation CB on Naples, and Naples dislikes us slightly more. Or this final option right here makes us lose a ton of prestige, and basically we do nothing. Obviously, the option you want to choose is the second option right here, where we gain a subjugation CB on Naples. But either way, we won't be using that subjugation CB because making these guys a vassal is going to be way too much aggressive expansion. And in these latest few patches, if you use this CB, you can't actually just take land and not vassalize them. You have to vassalize them if you use the subjugation CB. Either way, by the time that this event happened, you should have gotten a claim or two on Naples. If you haven't gotten a claim on Naples, now you're going to start spying on them to get a claim. But if you already have a claim, it is time to move on with our wars. So the first thing you're going to do after Naples becomes independent is actually go ahead and rival them just like that with that free slot that we kept open right there. And then once you've rivaled Naples, you're going to wait for them to rival you back and you're going to check and see if you can go ahead and excommunicate them. In my game, I actually can't excommunicate them since I have too good of an opinion of them and they also bought indulgence for their sins, which means we're not going to get that pretty good CB, but honestly, it's different for everyone. So if you could excommunicate them, go ahead and do it. And then it's time to declare your war on them using the excommunication CB. If you can't excommunicate them, you're going to use a regular conquest CB from the provinces that you spied on and not use the subjugation CB. We're possibly going to use this one later. Either way, no matter what CB you got versus Naples, it's time to raise army maintenance and go ahead and take out a few more loans if you need to, to go ahead and hire a mercenary company. The merc company I recommend hiring is actually the Swiss Guard, the one that we got from that mission. And there we go. At this point, you can also recruit a general, wait for morale to fill up, and it's time to declare on Naples. In my game, the Valley Ragusa by now, but it's really not a problem if they get a small ally or two. At this point, keep in mind that I'm also spying on Provence. Provence is actually the second nation we want to fight because as you all know, France usually does break their alliance with Provence, which is exactly what's happened in my game. Once you recruit a mercenary company though, you will be able to take this mission right here, which gives us a general with 6 tooth tradition, which I actually forgot about, so there's no need to recruit a general, just use the 6 tooth tradition guy, which is actually pretty good in my game. And once you're ready, go ahead and declare your first war versus Naples, preferably with the excommunication CB, if not with the regular conquest CB. I'm gonna call in Milan to help out a little bit. And once you go ahead and defeat Naples, which honestly should be an extremely easy war, here's what I recommend doing. I recommend taking provinces up to around 40 aggressive expansion. Now, if you went with the excommunication CB, you should be able to take all of these provinces right here for just about 40 aggressive expansion. As we can see with that regular CB, with just a conquest CB, it's around 65. So, if you excommunicated Naples, take this right here along with money and war reps. If you didn't excommunicate Naples, if you're using a conquest, take these three provinces right here. And no money or war reps since we want to fight them as soon as as possible. So those are your two possible peace options versus Naples. Both will give you around 40 aggressive expansion. This one is conquest. This one right here is excommunication. Take provinces based on which CB you use. And there we go. That's your first war and first war versus Naples done. Now, after doing this, we immediately need to take a look at Provence and check out the situation with them and see if we can pretty soon right here declare a war on them. So the first thing you're going to do is simply check if they're still allied to France, which if the surrender of main war has ended, they shouldn't be. They always break the alliance with Provence after that. And then you're going to check and see if they have any powerful allies. Usually they don't. Usually they're allied to weak nations. In my game, it's just Ferrara and Saluza right here, which of course makes it super easy to fight them as well. So with them, you're going to do the same thing. Check to see if you can excommunicate them. I can't. Once again, I have too good of an opinion with them and they bought indulgence for their sins. So if you can't excommunicate them, once again, just like with Naples, you're going to use your regular conquest CB. Don't declare on them right away though. Wait a little bit till you core up the provinces that you took from Naples. Either way, for your tier two government reform as the Pope, which should come about five or six years after the game starts, you do have a bunch of different options right here. This one gives the clergy loyalty. If you construct churches or cathedrals, tolerance of the true faith, this one right here, manpower recovery speed is pretty good. This one is related to colonization, which you could swap to later on if you decide to colonize. This one is mainly for boats right here. The yearly devotion and change national focus cooldown is pretty good. And then the commercial mission is actually really important for us or the mission of protection is pretty decent as well. So what I recommend right here, if you're going for a money-making playthrough is the commercial mission. If you're going on a maybe crusading playthrough over in the Middle East and North Africa, you should go for mission of protection. And if you're doing just a regular conquest playthrough over in Europe, I do recommend the external mission. Since I'm doing a 
a sort of tall-ish run as the Pope right here in my game, I'm going to be going with the commercial mission. If you went with that mission as well, then you should go ahead and put this extra merchant right here in Valencia and dump the transfer over to Genoa. Once you've kickstarted your first wars, you should tell these guys to improve relations with outraged countries. You'll notice that you also have the papal actions and yet you are able to excommunicate various nations around you. While you're over here in this interface, you may notice that you have the papal actions right here. This is how you can pretty easily check if you can excommunicate someone. And in my game, I can actually do Naples and now, which isn't that nice. It would have been preferable if I could do it earlier. But whenever you can excommunicate someone that you border and that you're planning to fight, go ahead and do it immediately just like that. So there we go. Now I have excommunicated Naples. Later when I fight them, if they're still excommunicated, we'll gain way less aggressive expansion for these provinces. As we can see, it's half off. No need to excommunicate someone else like Albania that was available in my example right here since we're not going to be fighting them and we're not going to be able to use those bonuses anyway. You get the excommunication CB only on provinces that you border. Once you're almost done coring the stuff that you took from Naples, if you can go ahead and fight Provence, it is time to go ahead and ask for mill access through France so you can move your troops over to Avignon. And once you're in Avignon and ready to declare in Provence, once again check to see if you can excommunicate them. I can't because they still have the indulgence modifier even though I don't have a positive opinion of them. And either way, whenever you're ready, go ahead and declare once again, just like on Naples, if you have the excommunicate CB, use it. If not, use the regular conquest CB. Once again, I'm going to call in Milan to help out. And I can call in Austria too, apparently. Why not? I'm going to do this just to make these wars faster. Now, while I'm in this war versus Provence, I can actually excommunicate them. Let's see if that does anything later. And once you have enough war score versus Provence, it is time to peace out. What you're going to take in your war versus Provence are these three provinces down here. Then if you're still rivaled, you can accumulate them and then you can go ahead and take some money. And that's your second war done. In 99% of the games as the Pope, these are your first two wars. Naples after Aragon lets them go and Provence after France breaks the alliance with them. These things happen in 99% of the games. I've only seen Aragon not release Naples once and I've actually never seen France not break their alliance with Provence in these latest few updates. So there we go. That's your first two wars done. If you take a look at Agrosa expansion now, especially if you use the excommunicate CB with both of these guys, it's going to be pretty much non-existent. If you didn't use the excommunicate CB, it's going to be around the 30s with the Italian nations. So either way, no matter what CB you use and no matter your aggressive expansion, it is time to chill a bit for about two or three years and it is time to annex our starting subjects, Perugia and Urbino. That's what you're doing right now. Keep in mind that these initial provinces that you take are going to be super expensive to core since some of them are already part of our states. There we go. Now I'll start annexing Perugia and Urbino at the same time. Now I just took out a couple of new loans to embrace the Renaissance. Once you embrace the Renaissance as well, you will be able to take this mission right here, found the Vatican Library, where this event happens. You have three options right here. Get an admin tech discount of 5% and minus two national arrest, get plus one diplo relations and minus 5% diplo tech cost, and gain plus 50% army tradition from battles and minus 5% mil tech cost. All of them are really good. I do think this one and this one are slightly better than the diplo one. Sorry, diplo rep, by the way. All of them are really good. You can take pretty much whichever one you want. You won't make a mistake with either one of them. In my game, I'm going to go with the army tradition from battles one. But keep in mind, all of them are really good. There's no mistake here. At this point, I've annexed both Perugia and Urbino. You'd have probably done the same. Around this point, you'll pay off your initial burger loans like I have right here, and you should go ahead and get completely new burger loans and start focusing on your economy a little bit. The first thing you need to do is build up some marketplaces in the center of trade and estuary provinces. Those will be Rome, Urbino after you annex it from your subject, Naples, which you'll have either way, and X, of course, down here, which may already have one if Provence has built it. After you build all of the relevant marketplaces like I have, focus on building churches. Of course, whenever your estates are all above 50 loyalty, make sure to seize land. We're trying to get above 30. Just like that. Very easy. Now, if you fought Provence or Naples super early, let's say some of you have already fought them by 1451 or two or something like that, and you're looking elsewhere to expand. The next nations that we're going to expand into are these guys right here. Now, your option is to either wait for these guys to leave the HRE, obviously all of them that aren't allied to Austria, and in my case, none of them are, or for you to join the HRE yourself and then go ahead and fight them. Those are your options. You are able to join your, the HRE if relations with Austria are good enough so you can do that if you want to or you can just wait for these guys to leave since i fought them a little bit later in my game right here they're about to leave in about three years right here there's no point in me joining the hre but if it's something like 1451 or two or three like i said you might want to join the hre so you can fight these guys without fighting austria like i said earlier periodically check to see if you can excommunicate someone that you will potentially fight in my game right here i can actually excommunicate venice right now even though that cb right now will only be valid for ravenna which is already our core 
it still doesn't hurt to use it. Once you get admin deck 5, it will be time for your first idea group. And as the papal state for your first idea group, I recommend quality ideas. Now, sure, you can take divine as well right here since we're a theocracy, but I don't think it is that useful for now. Quality, on the other hand, will make our army vastly more powerful with all the combat ability modifiers and the discipline. And because we're a nation in Italy, in the middle of the Mediterranean right here, we'll be utilizing boats quite a lot as well. So the boat ideas are really good for our playthrough as well. So quality ideas for your first idea group. For your naval doctrine, I also recommend selecting galley combat ability for now. And once 1462 hits, as you can see, the Italian nations will have left the HRE. And at this point, you will continue your conquest. If you were waiting for that, if you joined the HRE yourself, of course, you may have already fought some of these nations. Either way, it's time to select your next targets. It'll probably be some nation over here. Siena, Florence, maybe Venice or something like that. Maybe Savoy from this side, if you can hit them. Or maybe even Naples, if your truce with them has expired. That's exactly what happened in my game right here. So now I'm going to be declaring my second war versus Naples. I now have the excommunicated ruler CB. If you have it now, of course, now you're going to use it as well. If not, a regular conquest or maybe even a subjugation. In our second war versus Naples, of course, if they're still independent, they might have been re PU'd by Aragon or PU'd by Castile by this point, which basically means you're not going to fight them now. Either way, if they are independent, go ahead and fight them. I'm going to declare the excommunicated ruler CB for a Brutti right here. In your second war with Naples, if they're independent, you actually also want to make them your subject along with taking their provinces. And there we go, just like that, my second very easy war with Naples is done. If your war is done too, if you've even fought them at all, if they were independent, here's what you're going to do. You're going to take a couple of provinces for yourself and then you're going to vassalize them just like that. If, for example, in your first war, you already took all of these provinces, then you can maybe take like these three, leave them alive here and vassalize them, or you could just vassalize them immediately without taking anything else. Either way, what I'm going to do is this right here, leave them alive here and make them my vassal and take all of their money. The reason we're actually making Naples a vassal, if possible right here in our second war, is to reconquer their cores down here in Sicily from Aragon. If Naples doesn't exist, or if you full annex them, or if they weren't independent and you didn't fight them, later, when you fight Aragon, you're going to take a province over here to release Sicily from. Either way, we're never conquering Sicily ourselves. We're always either feeding the cores back to Sicily or to Naples. And there we go. That's your second war with Naples. If you did it at all, done. Once you've wrapped up the south down here, it's time to start heavily focusing on these nations up north. So start building spy networks and claims on Siena, Florence, Savoy, whoever you border, Genoa. Of course, don't forget to lower autonomy from time to time. It is pretty important that you do this. For your first stage ability, you should, of course, take justified wars for even less aggressive expansion. Now that a little bit of time has passed and I've built up a spy network on Siena, I am going to go ahead and declare on them once again with the help of my ally Milan. And in the same war, I'm going to make Savoy in their alliance with Aragon. And Aragon is actually really strong in my game right here because they've PU'd Castile instead of the other way around. So it's definitely going to be tricky fighting them. Either way, there's my declaration on Siena. Always check to see if you can excommunicate someone before a war. Obviously, you're going to be doing that the whole time. If you can, do it. If not, regular conquest. And there we go. For your tier 3 government reform, once again, you have a couple of options. If you took this one for missionaries and fort defense, I recommend going with this one now for more missionary related stuff. The idea discount right here and institution spread is really good too for playing tall, but the advisor discounts is excellent as well, along with the advisor discounts we already have from being the career controller. So all of these three are really good. In my game, I'm going to go with education of the court. And now that I finished my war with Siena, I will be full annexing them just like that. Really, after you do your first two wars, the first obviously versus Naples, the second with Provence, there really is no strict rule set as to which nations you fight up here. This is pretty much the region that we're focusing on conquering, whether through Savoy or through some of these minor guys right here. Eventually, obviously, we'll fight Venice, maybe with the help of Austria, maybe when the Ottomans declare on Albania. It's different in everyone's game. And of course, the initial big boss we sort of might face right here in the first 50 years is Castile and Aragon because we do want to get involved in provinces they own as well. But of course, more on that later. Now, my war with Siena is done. You may have fought Siena, you may have fought Savoy, you may have fought Florence, Venice. It really doesn't matter. What you should always try and do is use the excommunicate CB. Now, I just helped Milan fight Genoa right here, and that made them pop out Corsic and made me think of something to tell you guys. Basically, there are obviously other ways of expansion as well without warfare that also minimize aggressive expansion, and that is diplo vassalization, which you might be able to do on some of these minor nations over in Italy once you grow powerful and up yourself. If you go over here into the production interface right here and then into offer vassalization, you'll see which nations will accept. And that is Corsica and Bologna right here. Now, sure, these aren't that highly dev provinces, only 8 and 12 dev, so it'll be pretty easy to fight them as well. But you may need to work around some stupid alliances or something like that.
like that. So why not minimize aggressive expansion? Why not minimize wars? And obviously, why not diplo vassalize a bunch of nations? That's exactly what I'm going to try and do in my game right here. Diplo vassalize Bologna in Corsica. There are definitely a bunch of nations that you can do this to. These two guys, for example, Saluzzo you can do sometimes, and a bunch of nations up here that might get forced to pop out of Venice, such as Aquilia or Padua or Verona, for example. But like I said, I'm going to try with Bologna and Corsica. Obviously, the things you're going to do to get these nations to like you in order to diplo vassalize them is ally them, guarantee them, send them a gift, offer them mill access. If you're a great power, influence them, then you can also give them subsidies, everything that you need to get them up to 190 relations. You can also appoint a cardinal, which is quite honestly underrated in my opinion. It gives us 50 opinion. And you can use the Curia treasury too. And there we go. After just a few months, I can diplo vassalize them. Perfect. That's one province pretty much for free. Of course, as the Pope, you are going to be maxing out on points eventually. And obviously for that, you're going to want to go ahead and do some deving in order to spend them. Right now, I can notice that the Ottomans are fighting Venice, which is a perfect opportunity for me and you as well to declare on Venice, because sometimes your ally Austria isn't willing to help you out versus them. And they're really the nation that we most rely on to help us versus Venice. So this is a perfect opportunity. You can do this whenever you want to, either in the first war right there when the Ottomans declare on Albania, which does happen pretty early in the game, or maybe later on. Or maybe you don't even have to wait for the Ottomans to fight them. You can just declare on them on your own terms. Like always, check to see if you can excommunicate them. In my game, it won't really do anything since it'll be only valid for this province, which we already have a reconquest on. But if you definitely have more border provinces with Venice, definitely make sure to go ahead and excommunicate them. Either way, there's a reconquest for me. I'm going to call in Milan, because why not? Once you get enough boats, you will be able to take the mission and build a Roman Navy, which gives us some naval tradition. Of course, once you hit Admin Tech 6, make sure to start building those workshops in the high value trade good provinces immediately. And once you defeat Naples, what I recommend doing is obviously taking back your whore over here in Ravenna. And if you have more border provinces than me, and you use the excommunicate ruler CB, then you should take those provinces on which the CB is valid on. If not, though, I do recommend taking provinces from them that they may have over in the Balkans. In my game, they have Istria, Zara, and Spalato right here, which obviously I'm going to be taking. And then I'm also going to take Padua and Verona right here, up to about 30-ish aggressive expansion is pretty good, of course, depending on your campaign. I'm not going to be taking money or warps from them because I want the truce to run out as fast as possible. And there's my first war versus Venice done. If you did manage to take some provinces over here, then I do recommend releasing the nation of Dalmatia as your subject. They might have a couple of more cores that we can reconquer. And even if they don't, they're still a really good subject to have due to their super powerful national ideas focusing on trade, armies, and navies. We're going to be doing something else like this as well with Aragon, obvious. And there we go. There's a diplo vassalization on Corsica as well. If you once again find yourself with more than two subjects, like I have in my game with four right here, obviously you can go ahead and give the nobles strong duchies and the integration policy too, if you wish to annex these guys. Of course, I will be annexing them, so I will be taking it. Luca is another nation right here that would be willing to accept a diplo vassalization, and they would be pretty annoying to fight with all of these tiny allies, so I'm going to work on diplo vassalizing them as well. Once you gain a border with whoever your ally in northern Italy was, most likely Milan, it is time for you to break your alliance with them because, well, we are going to want to conquer them as well. And there we go. Now I can vassalize Luca. So there's three provinces right here pretty much for free. Now, something else that I can notice in my game right here is that Castile has actually declared an independence war versus Aragon with the help of France, which means Aragon right now is fighting Castile and France. And obviously, there's no way Aragon is going to win. So this is a perfect opportunity for me right here, declaring on Aragon when they're weak. And you're going to be looking for the same. Whether you vassalize Naples and are looking to reconquer their cores in Sicily, or you're looking to fight in Aragon for the first time in order to take these provinces to release Sicily, reconquer their cores, and whatnot. Whenever Aragon is in a weak position, you are going to go ahead and fight them. Thanks to your alliance with France, you should be able to declare on them eventually, even if they're kind of strong-ish. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and go for it. I'm going to be declaring on Naples. I'm going to declare on Aragon for the reconquest of Messina, obviously, but we're going to look to take something else as well, depending, of course, on what Castile and France do right here. And once you go ahead and defeat Aragon or Castile and Aragon, depending on the PU situations in your game, what I recommend doing is if Naples is your subject, obviously giving them all of their cores back in Sicily, if not just taking one province to release Sicily from to reconquer their cores later. Then I also recommend taking all of Sardinia right here. And then I recommend taking one province over in this area to release Catalonia from and one province down here to release Valencia from. Now in my game right here, Castile and France have expanded quite a bit over in what Aragon used stone. And even though France has these two provinces right here, it's actually not a problem because we can just use favors with them to ask them to return our subjects' course to them, which is perfect.
Republic will also gain these two provinces here pretty much for free. So that's awesome. There we go. There's the province that I'm going to release Valencia from. There's the province that I'm going to release Catalonia from. And then that's about all the war score that I have. So you're taking this right here either way. And if you've got Naples as a subject, this, or if you don't have them as a subject, just one province to release Sicily from. And that's your war with Aragon or Castile and Aragon or whoever is here done. Then obviously you're going to find yourself with some more vassals once you go ahead and release Catalonia and Valencia. Once you make a lot of money and you've paid off your loans, you will be able to rebuild the papal treasury where the papal tithe income is increased by 20% for 20 years. And then probably you can also restore the Curia funding. Once you hit Admin Tax 7, it will also be time for your second idea group and I recommend a money-making idea group such as Trade Ideas. Due to our dominant position right here in the Genoa and Venice trade notes and our desire to control Ragusa and Valencia as well, obviously we will have a lot of control over these notes and we want to maximize that making money even more. And I'm sort of leaning into the whole making money situation as the Pope right here in my campaign specifically. If you're going for a more aggressive playthrough, like I said earlier on, maybe conquering some provinces in Northern Africa and the Middle East, in that case, obviously, I recommend religious ideas. However, if you're planning to stick to Italy or to just Europe or something like that, definitely trade. So no matter which type of playthrough you're going with, either quality religious or quality trade. And obviously, right now, I am going to ask France for some course back from my subjects Catalonia right here. You're just going to go down into the favors tab, return core province, and there we go. There's Girona, just like that. And do we have enough favors for Ruzilon? We need 27. We actually have 20 right now, so not yet, but I will curry some more. Obvious. Any nations that you might have diplo vassalized over in Italy, like in my game Corsica, Luca, and Bologna, they'll all probably be one or two province miners, annex them as soon as 10 years have passed. I'm gonna do it with Bologna right now. Once again, don't forget to lower autonomy. This is a little mid-game guide economy check. Right now it's exactly 1480 and I'm making about 27 ducats a month with armies and forts up. Like I said right at the beginning, do not underestimate those tax modifiers in the early game. Super, super important. Here's another nation that I'm gonna work on Diplo vassalizing, Saluzzo. At this point I've also annexed Bologna. And there's Saluzzo Diplo vassalized. For your tier 4 government reform, obviously as the head of the Catholic Church, you are gonna be taking head of the Catholic Church. Very, very powerful reform right here for the Pope. Religious diplomats has no impact on influence or absolutism while we're defender of the faith, which of course we will be later on. And then we also gain tolerance of the true faith, diplo rep, improve relations, and yearly devotion, max absolutism, and appoint cardinal cost. Right now I've gotten enough favors with France to ask them for Ruzilan back for Catalonia. And there we go. Since aggressive expansion isn't bad at all right now, I'll be declaring on Ferrara to annex them you're pretty much continuing to do the same, fighting any minor nations that are left up here before moving on to the bigger players, which in my game are Milan and, let's say, Savoy and Venice too. Now that my war with Ferrara is done, I will be full annexing them. Once you get six provinces in Marcia, Abruzzo, and Emilia-Romagna, you will be able to take a mission patrimony of St. Peter, where we gain a permaclaim on Tuscany, Liguria, and the Piedmont. These areas right here. As you can see, none of our sort of initial missions give us conquest CPs right away. We have to conquer a bit to be able to conquer more. Always to keep taking out new burger loans. I just took some new ones, and I'm going to focus on upgrading some centers of trade, such as the one in Naples, the one in Urbino, the one right here in Verona, and I've already upgraded all the other ones, so it's time to work on some buildings. Right now, I'll start annexing Naples. If you've given them all of their cores back, you can annex them immediately, or if you're doing with Sicily, once you give them all of their cores back, you can also annex them immediately as well. Whenever you get the event Prospering Times, make sure to select the second option right here. It pretty much creates another center of trade. In my game, the province in question is Terracina, which is right here, so it's pretty much like gaining a level 3 center of trade right here. Look at this. Right now, we don't have a marketplace over there, right? If we were to build one, we gain 0.9 trade power. However, after taking this event, it's 14.5 absolutely insane. So always go with that second option. Hopefully for you it'll spawn in Genoa or Venice. Now that my truce with Venice is up, I'll be declaring on them once again to take some more provinces. Obviously you should check to see if you can excommunicate them first. I can't, I haven't really had luck with that in my campaign right here. But either way, there's a declaration for Venice using one of Dalmatia's claims. I'm gonna call in Austria to help out. And there we go, super easy war done. I'm gonna take these three provinces right here. Obviously I can't reach this one and I don't need anything that they may have over here, even though they actually don't have anything. And there we go. There's my war with Venice. Done. Don't worry if you haven't taken over these provinces yourself in your campaign by now. Maybe it was easier for you to focus over here. Right now I can notice that France just declared war on Castile. And Castile isn't looking very powerful themselves. So this is a perfect opportunity for me to declare on them and reconquer some of Valencia's cores right here. Keep in mind that these wars versus Castile 
Castile or Aragon or Aragon and Castile together, they're just optional. And if you don't have the opportunity to fight these guys and take stuff over here from them in your game, then don't worry about it. You'll be doing it later once you're powerful enough. Either way, in my game, there's the declaration, a reconquest for Valencia. I'll be doing this by myself. Keep in mind that during this time, I'm not only focusing on wars, I'm constantly focusing on the economy as well and building the relevant buildings. This is what I've occupied and since these are the only provinces that I want, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give these back to Valencia, I'm also gonna get war reps and money, and there's my simple war with Castile here done. I couldn't take anything more because France had occupied a lot of stuff and really the only other thing I want from them is this province right here in the Valencia trade node, which once again, like I said, is occupied by France. Now, of course, I'll touch on great projects later on, but definitely once you have more than a thousand ducats you should start constructing St. Peter's Basilica. And there we go, I've just annexed Naples in my game as well. Don't forget to full state everything that you take over from your subject. Now by this point in the game you probably will be struggling with governing capacity just like I am as well, but right around the time you start struggling with GovCap is when you'll also hit Admin Tech 8. Now I am going to take it a little bit ahead of time right here just to unlock the courthouse building which is super super important for us. Once you unlock the courthouse, make sure to get as much money as you can. There's new indebted to the burger, burger loans for me, and I'm going to start constructing a bunch of these courthouses in every single available province. Make sure to build them in your subjects as well because sooner or later those will become your province. Right now I've also just started annexing Corsica. Around this point you can definitely afford to run level 2 advisors at least. Right now we're good on aggressive expansion so I'm going to continue my wars by finishing off some of the nations that are left in Italy. By around the 1490s like in my game right here there should be like two to five nations left right here depending on the wars they've done between themselves and the wars you've done on them. In my game I'm going to declare on Florence right here for the conquest of Pisa. Let's call on Austria to make this a little quicker. Now my war with Florence is pretty much done and just as I was about to peace out I got this event right here, Radical Reforms, I'm sure all of you know about it, but when you have a yearly inflation reduction and a trade efficiency advisor you can get to fire both of them for 200 admin and diplo points. What I recommend doing is firing them, then getting the points and then simply hiring them back because they are really good advisor. Either way, now that my war with Florence is done, even though these are super super high value provinces and you wouldn't think to annex all of them at once right at the start of the game now because there's so few nations left in Italy because these guys aren't in the HRE, a coalition won't form even if I full annex Florence right here. See, only 36 aggressive expansion, and they're not even excommunicated by the way. So there we go, there's my war with Florence, done. And now we own all of Tuscany. Now even though I'm helping out Austria in some of their wars right here, I'm good to go ahead and declare my own wars, aggressive expansion really isn't bad, the only nation annoyed that we're doing this is pretty much Milan, so it's time for me to declare on Savoy right here and full annex them. As we can see by this point, you're about to have one to three nations left in Italy. I'm not gonna call in anyone. Now I've wrapped up quality and trade and I can take the policy for plus 15% trade efficiency, a really really good policy. This is how my merchants are set up and by the time you have one to three nations left in Italy, you don't need to tell these guys to establish communities anymore, instead you can get them back to maximizing profit and you could also rearrange them. What I'm gonna do with my fifth merchant right here is tell him to transfer from Alexandria to Genoa and I'm gonna tell the guy that's in Genoa to transfer from Tunis to Genoa. And my war with Savoy is done, obvious they'll be full annexing them once there's a few nations left this really isn't a problem after you conquer nine provinces in tuscany liguria and the piedmont you will be able to take the mission crush the italian cities which gives you a permaclaim on venetia lombardy and the po valley pretty much this way we sort of went the other way in our playthrough right here i went to venice instead of to genoa first whereas the game sort of wants you to go to genoa first and then to venice later but it's just the opportunities i had in my game if it's easier for you to fight here first too then do it you don't have to follow along with the mission sheet. right now i'm also going to annex luca and saluzzo anyone that you might have vassalized in the region of Italy or in the Genoa and Venice trade nodes, you're going to be annexing them, whereas Dalmatia, Valencia, Catalonia, or anyone else that you might get in Ragusa and Valencia trade nodes, you're going to keep them around until you start actually bordering them. For your tier 5 government form, I recommend one of these three right here. All of them are really good and they'll all help you out quite a lot in your game. If you're someone that barrages quite a lot like me, then this one is probably the best. At this point, Luca and Saluzzo have been annexed. In my game, I just got the commissioning of the St. Peter's Basilica event, which enabled me to upgrade it to tier 2 for free. So that's why it's best to upgrade it to tier 1 as soon as possible so when you get that event it just goes up to tier 2 instead of waiting to build it and you get the event and it'll go up to tier 1 instead of 2. Now my truce with Milan is up I will be declaring on them in order to take over these provinces right here so I can connect my land and also take some additional provinces. They've grown quite a lot so we will need about 3 wars to take them down without getting coalition but as you can see by the 1500s right now it's only one nation left in Italy and only two nations that we need to fight in order to declare the kingdom of God. 
god. Either way, there's my declaration for the conquest of Genoa. And now that my war with Milan is done, I'll be taking the following five provinces, leaving the rest of these over here for my next two wars, because these are really high def provinces, all of them right here, and we do gain quite a lot of aggressive expansion, and since I have everything already stated, this is going to be quite a lot of admin points as well. So there's my initial war with Milan done. Most likely in your game as well, the nation that you've chosen to ally in northern Italy, most likely Milan once again, will most likely be the biggest out of anyone in northern Italy by the time you get to fight them. Right now, France just broke their alliance with me due to some rival rivalries and alliances that differ between us either way no big deal later on or pretty soon after you take over Italy you're gonna break your alliance with one of France and Austria in order to use one to help you defeat the other I recommend remaining allied to whoever is more powerful luckily in my game Austria is more powerful they did get Burgundy and they also have Hungary as we can see so I'll be using Austria and Hungary's help to help me beat up France over here to take some provinces that I want in the Valencia trade note of course you could do it the other way too use France's help to help you beat up Austria or Hungary or the Ottomans or whoever to take provinces in Venice and Ragusa. Of course, when your subjects aren't rebellious at all, you can go ahead and tell them to divert trade over to you to make some more money. Right now, I've also just become Defender of the Faith. We do gain really nice bonuses. And by around the time colonialism spawns, your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we start off as the Pope in these few provinces right here with the classic Papal State opening of waiting for Aragon to let Naples go for free before declaring on Naples, possibly with the excommunicated ruler CB, which of course you should have tried to use during the entirety of the campaign even though in these latest few patches it is pretty difficult to excommunicate anyone since we absolutely love everyone because everyone buys indulgence for their sins either way after taking care of naples with whichever cp then you should have worked to fight provence because france broke their alliance with them and after your initial two wars versus naples and provence then you should have looked to expand in all of your northern neighbors right here taking them down one by one slowly and after getting a decent size yourself you should have also worked to diplo vassalize various nations around italy that are one or two province miners, which of course you will have the opportunity to do so. In my game, I did Bologna, Luca, Corsica, Saluzzo over here, so definitely lots of options that you can do. And after a certain point, your truce with Naples will have expired, and if they haven't been PU'd by Castile or Aragon, you should have chopped them down to size once again and vassalized them before possibly reconquering their course from Aragon over here. If you didn't have the opportunity to do that, when you possibly once again fought Aragon, you should have taken one province down here to release Sicily from and reconquered their course. And your game should look a little something like this after fighting all of the northern Italian guys. By this point, depending on the alliances and depending on how nations in northern Italy grew, you should have a zero to three nations left that you have to fight over in northern Italy, and that's including Trent right here, which we do have to fight in order to declare the kingdom of God. As we can see in my game, I'm only missing Milan and Trent. So, after those initial wars, you pretty much fought whoever in northern Italy, whoever was the easiest to fight. Venice, of course, when they fought the Ottomans with the help of Austria and so on. And if you did manage to fight Aragon or Castile slash Aragon, you should have taken provinces to release Valencia and Catalonia from, and if you fought Aragon again, you should have reconquered some of their cores, and if you did end up fighting Venice for some provinces over here, you could have Dalmatia, or maybe there was some other easy nations to fight over here, Serbia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Ragusa, Albania, and you may have expanded further than I have over in the Balkans, and you're ready to reconquer some of their cores as well. Obviously, after this point, you're going to continue to expand in the same directions we've already been expanding in, basically consolidating the northern portion of Italy, declaring the kingdom of God right here, then continue to reconquer your subjects as scores and in the first 50 ish years what you should focus on is the Valencia Genoa Venice and Ragusa trade nodes and then the next 50 years what you should focus on is continuing to consolidate those regions so by around the 1550s 1560s you should have pretty much all of these regions right here or not regions sorry trade nodes unlocked and like I said just a minute ago with the help of one of your allies France or Austria you should defeat the other one and take the provinces that you want from them and after defeating that one you should turn your back on the initial nation that help you out and fight them as well for the remaining provinces they want in those regions. Of course, you could also keep your alliance with both if possible and use both of them to help you fight the Ottomans if you want to take down the Ottomans first. But those are the regions you'll continue to expand into. Valencia, Genoa, Venice, and Ragusa. That is pretty much the minimum of what you should conquer as the Pope. And after that, it's totally up to you how you continue your game, whether you continue to expand over here in Europe, grow some more, or maybe you'll go crusading, reconquer the Holy Land over in the Middle East, or maybe even take over some provinces and northern Africa and convert away. Of course, there's lots of options in the papal government reforms and missions right here to go colonizing as well. So you might want to do that as well. Those are basically your three routes of gameplay as the Pope. Stay in Europe or play in Europe and go over here as well and then maybe even go on to colonize. You can still choose after this point which of those options to do. Even if you're colonizing, you're still not taking exploration and expansion for your first two idea groups. Either way, by this point, we haven't been only focusing on expanding and 
Diplo vassalizing nations and vassalizing nations and reconquering their cores, you should have also worked on your economy heavily. I'm going to showcase my economy right now and you should have looked to have something similar in your game by the time colonialism spawns. As we can see, I'm making about 66 ducats a month with two full armies and forts up. I'm running level three advisors as well, which is pretty good for this point in the game. A decent portion of our income coming in from trade as well. And these are the buildings that I've built. You should have looked to build something similar in your game. I've constructed courthouses in every single available province, including my subjects, and I am near GovCap as well. I've got production buildings in almost all of the high value trade good provinces, churches, and pretty much every single province that I could have built one in so far. Of course, you're going to be building them in all provinces that give you more than 0.1 ducats a month. A couple of army buildings here and there as well. And of course, marketplaces in all of the center of trade and estuary provinces. And speaking of center of trade provinces, all of my centers of trade that I own are upgraded to level two. Of course, as the Pope, we can utilize quite a lot of great projects as well. Almost all of the ones over here in Italy are very useful, especially the St. Peter's Basilica. You will want to upgrade that as soon as possible. The Santa Maria del Fiore is excellent for even more advisor costs, along with the advisor costs we already received. The Domo de Milan is really good as well for Catholic nations, and the Doge's Palace and Royal Paris of Caserta are really nice as well, although you do have the Palace of the Popes right at the start as well for some province governing costs, but this one at Tier 3, it really isn't that powerful. This one is pretty good as well, and of course you will probably be getting this palace right here from Aragon, which is also really good for Catholic nations. So all of these right here that you aim to conquer in the early portion of the game are super strong, and then you have some additional ones in Iberia and in the Balkans that you can take advantage of later down the line if you do choose to expand that way. By the way, regarding the armies, this is what my armies are looking like right now. Two stacks of 35,000 regiments. Of course, Lamedis combat with this 24, so they are 24 for 7, both of them. This is my main sort of fleet right here, 21 galleys, 10 transports, and I do have two fleets of around 10 galleys protecting trade in both Genoa and Venice. Later on, you're going to want to protect in Valencia and Ragusa as well and build up this fleet with a couple of heavies and a couple of more galleys too. This is what we took for our first two idea groups, quality and trade. If you went the route I'm going for your third idea group, I once again recommend the Mila idea group to buff up your armies even more. Divine wouldn't be bad at this point, but it's not really that good compared to like offensive, defensive, or quantity in my opinion, even though you are the Pope. Since we're so rich and we're going to want a massive force limit since we're able to field such large armies, I wouldn't discount quantity for your third idea group, especially some policies that we have with trade, for example, for plus 15% goods produced is really strong. So I do recommend quantity for your third idea group. And then for your fourth idea group, I recommend whichever one you didn't take out of trade and religious if you're planning to expand in other regions, obviously. So if you took trade for your second one, religious for your fourth one. If you took religious for your second one, trade for your fourth one. And I think those are pretty nice openers as the papal state, no matter if you're doing a tall-ish campaign or an expansion-focused campaign. So quality trade, quantity religious. If you're really not going to convert that much and if you're pretty much only staying tall in Italy or something like that, then I recommend another money-making idea group for your fourth one or your second one instead of religious, such as economic or infrastructure, for example. And after that, the rest of the choices are totally up to you. Take whichever ideas you need at that point in the game. This is what we took for our first five government reforms. Like I said, for tier three and tier two, you do have a couple of options for tier six, though. I recommend this one right here in order to make the Pope a general himself, get the Battle Pope active, plus one land leader fire, and plus 10% manpower in true faith provinces, which is pretty much plus 10% national manpower since everything will be true faith. For tier seven, if you want to lean into the army even more, take divine nobility. If you want to lean into making money even more, take mercantile tithe. For tier eight, I recommend empowering the burghers or embracing the economic theory. For tier nine, I recommend combat heresy. For tier 10, I recommend one of these two. For tier 11, I recommend church and state. For tier 12, I recommend religious society. And for tier 13, all of them are really good, especially these two, one state under God and the global crusade. Both will enable you to expand it quite a lot, quite rapidly. And like I said, around the time colonialism spawns, your realm should look a little something like this. If you're not that confident in your abilities or if you're not sure if your game is going to go like mine, this save file is available for all YouTube members in the Save Games Discord channel, and you can continue playing as the Pope from this date forward. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot, and if you like the content and want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them, and you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.